changes or whether rule changes should be considered to make the sport more attractive. Uh, I'm sure we will have interesting comments from our panel and also from all you guys with a lot of questions. So uh, we need a strong and experienced moderator to guide us through this hour. So I think we are in good hands with the uh, FINA Vice President, Dave Neuberger. Dave. Thank you very much and good morning. It's a great pleasure, uh, Mr. President, Mr. Director, to FINA Bureau and to all of the attendees from around the world, National Federation leaders, water polo leaders. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you this, this morning for this final session. This session is um, the one on rules. And we've heard over the last day, and certainly even this morning, a great deal about the presentation of our sport. And the presentation, obviously, is very important. But also, rules are important. So it's, it's time for us to have that opportunity. I think it's important for us to remember one thing as we begin this discussion, though. And that is that water polo is a fantastic game. And we have a great foundation. And we should be looking for not many rules to change, but some rules, perhaps, that could make a strong difference. We have to remember that the foundation of the game is very strong and that what we have in place is very good. And we continue to want to make it better. Um, there are going to be various ideas that are generated from the four panelists who are experienced and have various viewpoints. And I know there is the possibility to raise a number of issues related to rules. But I hope that you will give consideration to the suggestions that they make, react to them, because in the end, the importance will be unity and consensus around rules changes and those things that can best advance the game to be the best that it possibly can be. So uh, we have uh, four um, excellent uh, present presenters, speakers for you this morning. Uh, the first is Eric van Heinegen. Eric has been the president of the Royal Dutch Swimming Federation since 2001. He's a former chairman of the FINA doping panel and is now a member of the FINA Bureau. Uh, second is Manuel Ibern, Lolo. Lolo is a uh, former national team player for Spain in the Mexico City Olympics. Uh, coached the Spanish team in two Olympic games as a member of the Technical Water Polo Committee, and most importantly for us, has also been the competition director for two fantastic world championships in Barcelona in 2003 and 2013. Third is uh, Coach Adam Kerkorian. Adam took over the coaching reins for the United States women's team in 2009. There have been 10 competitions in that period of time and his teams have won seven gold medals in those 10 experiences, including being the gold medal winning team in London at the Olympic Games. And fourth is, uh, is another coaching legend, uh, Dennis Kemeny from Hungary, who now serves as the National Water Polo Federation president, is a great national team player for Hungary, and has the distinction of coaching three gold medal Olympic champions in Sydney, Athens and Beijing. So you clearly have a great group, people who are experienced, people who can bring various viewpoints. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to Eric. Dear friends, and having listened to Dill, I'm apparently the amateur in this uh, distinguished company. I have two goals for my presentation today. First of all, to warm you up, coming to the end of this conference, this great opportunity to have this serious discussion with each other, to warm you up a little bit, and second, secondly, to underline that the top level of water polo is very, very important, but not to forget about all these average water polo players, like me, playing their game day in, day out, week in, week out. And I think the intrinsic value of our sport, our sport of water polo, is connecting all these different levels.
and uh, preparing for this uh, conference, I asked a couple of people, important people in my own federation to prepare. So what I'm going to tell you is more or less an opinion, just an opinion from the Netherlands. Everything I will tell later on is with respect for the past. Blood, sweat and tears to be a champion. Ten years ago, one year ago, 50 years ago, only the best will win. So no, no distinction from the past. And I've seen thrilling matches, spectacular, spectacular finals. And the FINA Techno Water Polo Committee has always been a very active committee which has united the water polo family in an ongoing discussion. And if you allow me a small joke, and I will make only a joke about the Dutch water polo family, and Andy is sitting over there, maybe Andy can stand up for two seconds, Andy Hoopelman, uh, bronze medalist, 1976, this was only half a second, but Andy is representing a Dutch water polo man, passionate and always in discussion about water polo. And I'm sure, and I'm sure you recognize these kind of types. I was only joking about our, my own uh, brother and sisters in the Netherlands. To be clear, no frustrations are driving me about my own level or about the possible effects playing water polo or about my own size. <laughs> Getting 50 two years ago. It's still a great sport for all of us. However, and I underline, however, we have a serious problem for all levels. Still not dynamic and creative enough. And just one question, how many goals are being scored outside the situation of man up? I think it can be different. And is it attractive for the youth starting? Remember the presentation about rugby in the US, fantastic presentation. Is it attractive enough for non-insiders? You have heard many speakers before. It's difficult in this way to involve sponsors and TV exposure minimal. Well, that's a question, but I'm touching the borders of the discussion right now for the, sake, for the sake of the discussion. And all of you know, a standstill is going backwards and we need a wider perspective. So to the question, do we need any rule changes? My answer is yes, but the rules are too difficult. I'm not going to elaborate on this topic. You have heard good speakers today. It's too slow. I promised my friends in the Netherlands that I would use the word speed gating at least once. Thinking of Sochi, of course, but it's too slow. And not enough show element. Think of basketball. You have seen a presentation yesterday from the US. Wonderful. Or compare alpine style skiing with the new freestyle skiing. It's a good example in their sport. And the conditions of the pools not being representative. And uh, Alessandro Campagna, he, he clearly showed some examples from Italy, but I could show you similar examples from the Netherlands. By the way, this photo uh, shows a final. No, it shows the match, the Netherlands-Russia. Uh, two weeks ago, we lost and uh, the return is this weekend. 1,500 people in a relatively small pool, but fantastic, fantastic. Second, just think of the size and the physical strength, strength of the athletes nowadays. They are professionals, numbers of hours training in relation to the past. So this is very serious discussion in relation to the size of the pool, the goal, and the ball. Effects on the game as such. And I'm showing, of course, one of the heroes from the water polo, the Hungarian team. And the new, the new rules accepted in Barcelona, they are a true step in the right direction. I underline this, but will it be enough? There have been many, many solutions men mentioned. I only show a few of them. Decrease size of the pool decrease the number of players. Some say combine men of, and women. I don't know whether it's serious, but no physical contact 
contact at all allowed. You heard the question from the audience today. Decrease size of the ball, increase size of the goal, or introduce, like in basketball, the three, three seconds rule, maximum time for a center forward within the five meter, just in front of the goal. You remember, all of you, the pictures of a static game. But, I have to say, but, be careful. I would like to underline which problems are we solving. I gave an example for how many goals outside the man-up situation. And let us concentrate on the headlines. And the rules in the water polo family are very important. But if you are not careful, we will lose ourselves in a very detailed discussion. Of course, the technical part is very important. You need a rule, and you need a clear rule. You need a rule which can be maintained, but only afterwards. First, think of the problem and the steps forward. Be realistic about pool sizes, about changing again. Of course, if you would diminish the size, it's possible. But I know in the Netherlands, I've been pleading for building a pool specifically for water polo with a size of 30 meter. And then once again, I will come back to these governments and tell, well, it's not necessary anymore. Be careful on this. And don't forget, this is very important, don't forget about the implementation of the new Barcelona rules. It takes time. It takes time for the referees, for the players to get accustomed. Maybe it takes time to re-improve some of the decisions. As I said, make sure. Our proposals, and it's not like mathematics, it's just for the sake of the discussion. Only three seconds just in front of the goal, and then get out. Just improve the amount of swimming. Just improve the possibility of making a goal different uh, than in the man-up situation. Reduce the time for man-up. And immediate, immediate return or replacement when the player has arrived at the re-entry area, and maybe the more specific, specific, specifically dedicated re-entry area. Very clear for the public, at least at the highest level. And maybe reduce 30 seconds to 25 seconds. Sometimes I see some games and no one wants to attack. And in, at least, uh, uh, in my opinion, it looks like they are only playing with the ball with no intention to make a goal. I know it's a difficult question for a referee, but if it's clear, ball to the other team. Spoiling time. Throwing the ball away. For me, it's uh, in contradiction with the, with the true uh, value of the game to score, to make a goal. And throwing the ball at the end of the 30 seconds, just in the left or in the right corner, as far away as possible, is contradictory to the game, in my opinion. And don't whistle, dear referee, in a situation the attack is going and somewhere in the corner two players are having a kind of disagreement with each other. Unless, of course, they start punching the nose that we should decide immediately, but otherwise make the game very speedy. And that's my other but. Don't only think about the rules. Be careful that we would not fall in this uh, this danger, we only start, start talking about the rules. Alessandro Campagna has been mentioned already. The set of pools should be an item, should be high standard. And you can differ the standard according to the level you're playing. And the digital elements, like in the Olympics of London, wonderful, wonderful. It, for, of course, the YouTube, but also for the television. Good examples. We were only talking about bad examples. We have had many good examples. This one is Eindhoven, January 2012, European Championship. And I'm sure um, other organizers, having listened to these kind of comments, will make a very good performance. But the standard is very important. Second, change it not directly to the play, but make visiting a water polo game more attractive. I think many speakers, especially from the other world than water polo have underlined this important. Digital boards, state-of-the-art scoreboards, show element, and think of time slots. Good question from, uh, I think, from, uh, from the uh, social media today. So, to be short, I thank you for your attention, and you know the, the statement, water polo, a way of life. 
let's make our life even more attractive. Thank you very much. Dear friends, my speech uh, is not to make a concrete proposals. I think that before to discuss the, the rules, I think the, the, the first step, the good approach, is to discuss which are the problems, to make a good diagnosis about which are our weaknesses, what butter polo where should you, we, we should go, and with, the, with goals and challenges we must achieve. I think this is the important question first, to clarify better which are the problems of our games. For that, um, in my opinion, I have three key, three key points, three key issues. Surely there are more than this, this, these three points, but in my opinion, I want to call your attention about these three points. The first three, the first is the difficulty to have our sport of score goals in equal numbers of players. Let's see the first, the first data. This data is a, a general study in the World Championships in Barcelona 2013. And I, I, I hope that in one month it will be published all the data about every team, every match, and general, and general, and general data. No? And as you can see, this is the way to get goal, to score goal in the, in the 12 matches in the quarters, semi-final and final, the best matches in the championships. No? As you can see, the superiority is the most important action of, the, of our game. 50, 55% of the goals we score in this way. But the most uh, worried thing is in action clearly, with the equal number in movement, in play water polo, only we have 34. Are you satisfied with this data? Do you agree? We must to change? If we consider all the speeches of the, these two days, the tendency of the sports teams in that moment to be more attractive, but the important is to be more connected with the new news communication strategies, with the, me, with the new social media, with the to be competitive within the sports market with another sports teams, the priority always is the same. First priority, attack. Second priority, attack. And third priority, the attack. The most important thing is to get every time more amazing goals. Emphasize the, the individuality skills against the tactics. More speed and quickness in the movement and promote the star players. This words is what, I, what we hear here, here in, the, in, in two days about the important, what is the passion, what is the emotion, what is the magic of the sports teams. Uh, we are in not in a good uh, position with this data. One can consider that this is water polo. This is our tradition, this is our game. Our game is this, this kind. I don't think so. I think that uh, m m water polo must consider which are the possibilities of the evolution in another way. And why is the, why, why happens this situation in our sport? In my opinion, it's because there is, no, there is no balance between the attacking team and the defending team. The balance in our rules always is in favor of the defending team. And the destructive power of the defending team is more powerful in water polo than, than the another sport on the ground. We move slow, slowly, we move with the difficulty of the water, and any fall, any simple fall, 
is very destructive power than the other sports teams in the ground. Having advantage in water polo, in the moving, that is important and crucial with the other sports teams, here is not real advantage. We can see in every, in every match, the players renounce to move inside in the area with advantage because they consider that it's not useful. It is dangerous because there's possibility of the control foul. This situation blocks the evolution of our sport, cut the possibilities to create new possibilities of a score goal, close to the movement inside in the area. Our sport is reduced a wet scheme. It reduced, can I change of the... You can see here, the exclusion fools, how is the, the fault on this exclusion, exclusion uh, fools? And you can see that the most important thing is the exclusion center. And the exclusion of the arch in the position and the static position positional is 60%. But the most important thing here, the most important thing is in movement exclusion, in movement is only 10%. It's in contra-attack, and exclusion in the movement. This is our situation. It's for that, the, uh, from the difficulty of score goals, this is our first problem that we must solve. We must open the possibilities to a score goal in action, playing water polo. This is the priority, to score more goals, more goals, and to double the number of goals in action that change this data. The second problem is that the punishment system, the exclusion system, the major fall, doesn't work well. We spend a lot of time. The average in every match is uh, 10, 11 by team and by match. It represents more, more or less the 20% of the time dedicated to extra man situation. We have every three or four actions of the game an exclusion. And the efficiency, this is the best way to score goals now, but the efficiency of this situation is very low because the efficiency in goal, it, it from 33% to 45%. Why doesn't work? well for me, this, this system of punishment, the exclusion, because it's not a deterrent factor. Doesn't prevent to the defendant team from committing another time, another time, another time, the same offense. And fails this system, and the most important aim at the punishment system is to protect the action of the attack. This system cut the action of the attack. The coach order better exclusion than a score goal. If it is true that, it's clear the conclusion that the system, the punishment doesn't work well. The coach order the change is the players, and we have seven or eight players of each team, of each team, to make this major fall. I don't know any sport that, that so many, so many, the majority of the players commit this may have fall. But there is another thing, the three falls, the three falls that is exclusive, exclusion for the remainder of the game, the average is less or one for match and team. That it is not, the three falls is not a wall for the defendant, for the defendant to commit new falls. It's for that, but this, this system, yes, there is another, another consequence that this system became the key tactical factor of the game and the referee is the reference of the game. This is the, the worst that would, what can happen in our sports team. We must revise this, this system. In which way? It's not easy, to, it's not easy to, to find a good solution, no? There are different proposals that do, we see, but in any case, the system of the punishment, in any case, must be the way to score goal. 
the chief way to score goals. This is not correct. And in any case, in any case, the defending team must use this tool as a stop the action of the attackers. We must to protect the movement of the action in any case. The three question is the last. It, it has been many very well speaker with the, the Peter Diamonds is that there are in our sport many, many, many stops for, by whistle. The fools for game, every game is 43, the average is 43, 50 is the average of the, or, of the, of the fools. But the most important thing here is the majority of the faults is ordinary faults. It's 74% to the exclusion of 26%. But another thing, this is, a, this is a data about where produce these ordinary faults. This is the a data about ordinary faults in which, in which place of the field play produce this fault. You can see that in the, in the field of the, the play, this is the transition, happened nothing. We, we spend a lot of time, it happened nothing. It's only 5% of the falls in all the transition. No? But in the center, don't whistle, ordinary fall. I don't understand why, but don't whistle, ordinary fall. And there is also in the attack, in the position of the attack, it is the beginning of the attack on produce the number of majority of falls, of falls. I think this is a, or, these ordinary fools, are, there are two kinds, two kinds of ordinary fools. One for tactical reasons for the, the defendant commit fault because he's interested for the defendant, and another by inertia, because when he turns the back, he enters the, the player, immediately the, he, there is the whistle of the referee. This is a, a tradition. I think, I think that uh, in this question, I think that the challenge that we have is we must diminish completely the number of whistles. We must diminish completely. Less whistle, less whistle, better play water polo. For summarize, uh, I think for improve, for to be attractive, for to be modern to the new needs of the, of the market, of the customers, of the new views that for the first time for, this, for the first time uh, see the, the water polo match, I think that the solution is easy. Play water polo, please. Pass, move, shoot. This is the solution. It's fantastic. It's incredible. In the water, a play, this is original. I asked I ask, uh, two, two weeks ago a question uh, at the, the responsible of the... Um, who produced the TV in, in Barcelona 2013, responsible of the TV, Spanish TV in water polo. And I want to ask, what is your opinion about uh, our sport? And he said, enthusiastic. This is very fantastic. It's visual. It's, it, it, the, beauty, the images are beautiful. And the, and, and the slow motion is fantastic. No? But I don't understand that they stop continuously the game. In a, in a commentator of TV, I can explain and I can understand all the faults. And there is another thing that I am very surprised is that and we need, the TV we need, more visibility of the face of the players who make something different. And there is have problems about the visibility of the face to identify exactly the expression and the name of the thing. But repeat only, I think that we must emphasize emphasize the skill individuality against tactics, emphasize new possibilities of a score goal, emphasize the attack. Uh, let's water polo play. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, well, it, it's an honor to be here today. I, I obviously, I think we all have, we all share a great passion for the sport of water polo. Uh, so I, I really appreciate the invitation. Um, I think we're, we all are in agreement that we we need some excitement in our sport. We need some drama. Well, I, I, you know, I, as you already saw the slide, I did my part um, in the Olympic Games. So I, I I hope that worked for everyone and, and added some excitement. Um, not benefit of my team. I, I wish my, my, my Dutch friend here was a little slower with, uh, um, with a little ticker uh, to call the timeout, but certainly a, uh, certainly a, a horrible moment for me. Um, leadership, you know, and there's a picture of one of the great leaders of, uh, of our generation. You know, leaders are more focused on how things should be, not how things are. And the great thing about being here is that that's exactly what we're doing. You know, leaders from all over the world are coming here in one spot to talk about how things ought to be, how things should be, not necessarily how things are right now. Hopefully I can be, I think this is going to be pretty simple um, and, and pretty clear. You know, I know this panel has been uh, put up to task to, to talk about the rules, but I do feel like it is important to understand um, the rules are probably, you know, somewhere, um, I don't know, maybe fourth, fifth on this list. I don't know if this is the exact order of things, but number one, I firmly believe, you know, you're talking about laying a foundation for success. It's like building a house. Right, you start with the foundation, and then you you build from there. I think as water polo coaches, we talk uh, usually we talk about uh, your legs, and it starts with your legs. And without good legs and good balance, uh, you have nothing. Right, and you're building from there. For us, it's about people. You know, anytime any successful organization or company or group of people or sport, it starts with getting the right people. I think Sandro talked about it yesterday. Right getting passionate, hard workers, okay? We can change all the rules in the world, but if we don't have passionate, hard workers in our sport, nothing's gonna change. You know, getting people more focused about what is right instead of who is right, right? What's important for our game? Not am I right, is he right, is she right, right? More important about what is right for, for our game. You know, and again, without these nothing Okay, the rules mean, mean nothing. Uh, I think, again, this is an order, you know, and I, I, I truly believe that as we, the rules are easy to change. That's easy. <laughs> Everything else that's been talked about this weekend is, is more difficult. Finding good people is probably the hardest thing. You know, fan entertainment experience, marketing the athletes, these are, these are difficult. These take time. It takes a tremendous amount of work and a tremendous amount of effort. I think rules are, are fairly easy. Attracting new fans, you know, I think many of you probably heard the definition of, of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, right? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Well, I think we all agree that if we continue to do the same things over and over again, and I'm not saying that we haven't made progress. It just in my short time of being around, I think we've made tremendous progress. But we still have a ways to go. I think when I was thinking about rules, I'm like, you know, what's the purpose of a rule? Rules are to limit and to stop you from doing something. That's why people come up with rules. Right? To me, too many rules, this is very simple, too many rules, too many limitations. It's like handcuffs. No rules, okay, now on the other side of it, the other end of the spectrum, as I was mentioning to Peter here, is we could, we could go no rules, right? No rules. Let's just lay it out there, hey, no rules. It probably wouldn't be that confusing. You just grab the ball and you're trying to throw the ball in the net. Okay, but that's going to be total and complete chaos. So we need to find, right, somewhere in the middle. And just the philosophy, right, less is more. 
I think as coaches, I know I, I'm, I'm at fault at doing this. Some, but sometimes we make things more difficult than they actually are. Okay? It's simple. We need to make things simpler. I think uh, uh, Mike from Disney yesterday in ESPN, he, he said in, in America terms, dumb it down. Right? We need to dumb it down. We need the, the normal fan, the casual fan who's watching it for the first time. I think we all agree to understand. So we need to simplify things. You know, more rules equals more complex, more difficult to understand. To me, I'm amazed sometimes when I watch about American football. I think it's, uh, you know, I love it. I think all Americans love it. But it, it didn't start that way. There's so many rules in American football. Right? If you're watching it for the first time, and I have uh, uh, many f you know, friends who, who live overseas who have watched it for the first time, they're confused. They don't understand what's going on. Right? But it didn't start that way. They added rules because, as they became more, more popular. And to all officials out there, you have the most difficult job in the world to be able to officiate this sport where... 80% of it is happening underwater. So again, we need to make it easier for you. Okay? And we add that on top of the fact that we're combining people from all over the world to try to be consistent in the way we, we call the game. Well, the more rules, the more difficult that's going to be. This is just one statistic similar to what my friend said, you know, looking at the statistics, I, I love the statistics because that just, you, that's fact. Those are, are factual things. 50% of our goals in the London Olympic Games were scored on six on five. So if I know that stat, I'm thinking, well, Okay, 50% of our goals, well now we're going to try to create a 6 on 5 because 50% of our goals are scored on 6 on 5. So I'm not going to try to score. I'm not going to try to score. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to earn an ejection. Right? Which might lead to simulation. So, which again, as it says up here, it leads to more confusion. 50% of our goals are on six on five. We hear coaches all the time, work for the exclusion. Work for the exclusion. The, the normal fan has no idea what's going on. We joke all the time. We, we, we call it the, the simulation. We call it a shark attack. We think there's a shark under, under the pool. But this needs to change in order for us to attract the new fans. And just some future goals for the game. You know, I, I don't have all the answers. I certainly don't. I, and this is going to be, um, you know, uh, I think a lot of hard work moving forward. But I think we would probably, if I had a show of hands, I would guess that most of us agree that we want a quicker game, faster paced, and we want it to be less physical. So here are some things. And this is not just me. I've talked to many, many, many people about this. But we need to test proposed rules. And I know my friend will, will speak next, and he'll, he'll talk about that. But test, OK? I'm not saying that these are the rules, but we need to try. We need to try. We need to experiment. We need to test. Smaller course. I don't know about the women's game, but the men's game is 30 meters. Women's game is 25. I think if the men's game goes 25 meters, when I watch when I watch water polo on TV and the ball turns over and the goalie has it, no offense to all goalies, but I don't think anyone really wants to watch the goalie holding the ball for five or six seconds before they throw it. Immediate action. The smaller the course, the more action. Fewer numbers. I know that's been thrown out there. And again, I'm not saying that this is the definite solution, but fewer numbers. Six on six, five on five. Fewer numbers equals more space, less this. More space, more opportunity for those really talented and skilled athletes 
to display their ability. Fewer fouls, whistles, I think we all agree, right? Fewer fouls. The funny thing I was thinking last night is, you know, in the States, and I don't know if this was word right, but it used to be called dead time after a foul. Dead time. We had something in our sport that was called dead. It was dead. It's when nothing is happening. Okay, that can't be, that can't be good, right? Alive is good, dead is bad. Right? The stoppage time. I think about the, the NBA, and excuse me, because that's my, my experience, obviously, watching it in the States, but we are one of the only sports in the world where you are always, you're trying to foul, and it's a benefit to foul. You are fouling on purpose. Can you imagine if LeBron James in the NBA, he was getting fouled on purpose all the time? If you get fouled on purpose in the NBA, it's a technical free throw. The only reason why teams foul in the NBA is to make them shoot free throws, right? And even going that, free throws. So the six on five, to me, that's after a major foul, right? 50% of our goals. So imagine an NBA game that was a, if the Miami Heat and LeBron James, they scored 100 points. That's like saying 50 of those 100 points were free throws. Okay, pretty exciting stuff. And then last thing, and I may be a little bit biased because I'm really short, is you know, making the, the game accessible for all ages, for all sizes. Right now, it is, and it's more so on the men's side than the women's side, I will say. Right now, you have to be huge. You gotta be 6'5", and you gotta be 210 pounds in order to play this game. Well, right there, we're throwing out, how many people we're throwing out out of the equation? How many countries are we even throwing out of the equation? We need to make this game an opportunity for people of all sizes and all shapes to be able to play it. Sure, they have to be fit. But, and again, you know, these are just some thoughts and ideas, and I hope it sparks some, some, uh, some more conversation. But um, I say these things because I am passionate about the game. The game has given me a ton, has given me a lot, and I want to continue. I think we've made some progress, but again, I want to continue to see it grow where we can be on NBC more, where we can be on ESPN, where we are out there and we're making our sport bigger and growing it to the levels that I know we all share and we want to see it. Thank you very much. Ladies and, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear president, dear bureau, thank you for the invitation. It's a big honor for me. Uh, as in the past day and a half, we have heard people speaking about what they do and what can be interesting for our loved discipline for water polo. I just, in a few sentences, I want to uh, summarize uh, what I started to do one year before. For 30 years I was playing, for 21 years I was coaching, and I thought totally differently about the everyday work. I wanted always to win as a player, as a coach. As I became a leader, I had to start to think differently. I had to start to think globally of water polo, Hungarian water polo and worldwide water polo. So my first point was our future. In Hungary, we increased in the last 15, 20 years from 1,500 registered young players to six, 7,000. But we couldn't increase the swimming pools, the number of swimming pools, we couldn't increase the knowledge of the coaches. So fortunately, uh, thank you for FINA Bureau for the help of uh, Swimming Federation President Tamás Gyarfás. Uh, we will organize the 20, 2021 World Champs. We will have a wonderful pool. 
but we need a lot of pool because of the lot of kids. We don't have problem with the kids, and we need much more knowledge for the coaches. So I organized uh, uh, improper the uh, coaching clinic four semesters. We organized best coaches from Europe, from the world, from Hungary, and uh, to to teach the students and we organized the best uh, lectures from the university for the basic subjects. So uh, this is our future. Our present is our stars. Our stars are pulling people in the swimming pool to play water polo and to have uh, people on the stand. Hungary is not bad, but even Hungary has the same problem. We have water polo people on the stand we don't have other people who like, love soccer or love other team sports, ice hockey, and we need them more. But anyway, with the stars, we started a cooperation with our sponsors. I don't sign any more a sponsor contract, even for a big money, if they don't spend one dollar to one dollar for activate. We have Vodafone company, telecom company. We have Heineken beer company and they make every year different television spots with our players, with our coaches, to make uh, water polo much more popular. The third thing was what I wanted to change and improve is the communication. Just before I became the president, I have seen in Miami, uh, the Miami Heat basketball uh, team to play. I went in the hall, 20,000 people, and when I came out, I realized that the owner of the team putting on the field the best team of the world because they are NBA champion, it was only 50% of the show. The other 50% is to have the people every week, once, twice in the stand. So they work a lot on communications. They work, and I started to work as well on uh, on our website, much more dynamic. We have uh, in Wadapol, I think, the, the only website that in Hungary, any game we play now, including the 12 years old boy, live scoring is on, immediate statistics is on, and even if only the parents are interested, they can follow the game. Now if you uh, look for wadapolo.hu, you can see a cadet game, uh, so a second quarter, middle, you can see the statistics, the immediate statistics. And uh, uh, for the future, we're working with an American company for a specialized mobile application. In future, I mean summer or maximum September. So I think that uh, uh, any leader in Waterpolo have to uh, think global. The last question, and I, I go fast because uh, we will have, have no time for the debate. The last question is uh, what we heard yesterday uh, uh, about the NHL, that they are not sure. That's a, a dilemma. Uh, how important is the television fan who is watching the game in front of the television? Always huge number. Super Bowl uh, was uh, seen in lo local fans, 100,000, and billions all over the world. So who is the more, more important? My idea that we help as much as we can the television to transmit the games as uh, nice as they can and bring back the television advantages in the pool to show the, the people coming in the pool. These are uh, the main points, but now we are talking about rules. This is not my, or only my question. This is FINA Technical Committee question. I think that FINA Technical Committee made good steps last, last August in, uh, in Barcelona because uh, the changes of the FINA rules are helping uh, the skillful talents uh, in front of the aggressive players. That's very important because this way the product will be better. What we did, because last years we could see a lot of, we could hear a lot of ideas, 
what Hungarian Federation did. We did, we did some experiments. You can use our experiments. Uh, you can follow if you wish. This is not an obligation, but we don't speak only. We sacrificed one game last time against USA. It was a friendly training game. We gave headphones to the referees, uh, uh, headsets, excuse me, headsets to the referees and the delegate, and they could speak each other, and the level of the uh, refereeing was better. There was one more person who was a speaker, and sometimes he could announce the, the, the explanation of the referee about the decision. That, that uh, worked, not always, because sometimes the TV slow motion uh, showed something else what the referee explained, but we know, because we are water polo players, that this can happen. Uh, this is a step, this is an experimental uh, game was. The other, we sacrificed 32 games of uh, age 18 to 22 players, and we wanted two criteria, which we can have more fans, we can anchor other fans, not water polo people. The first important criteria for us was to make understand uh, easy for other people what happens in the water, and the other, again, to save uh, from the aggression, the uh, skillful talents. What we did, we uh, unified the referee's call, simple foul or major foul, always was uh, exclusion, but the excluded player could re-enter. This way we could see Lolo's uh, statistic. In a game in Barcelona, quarterfinal, semifinal, final, the media was uh, 86 whistles. This way we decreased the, the number of whistles for 25, 30. And the number of, of attacks have increased 30% uh, because of the short time of exclusion that always happened something in a few seconds and the counter, uh, if they didn't score, uh, gave another chance. Normally, a uh, team can attack 60 times a game this way, uh, the two teams. This way, we could see 80 attacks without decreasing the field of play. These are experiments. You can find both of them on YouTube. Uh, the first one with the headset of the referees is talking referees you can find. The second one is water polo experimental rules. So other questions at the debate I finish because uh, if someone speaks along for many people is able to do uh, other ugly things. Thank you. Well, thank you, gentlemen. The uh, presentations were outstanding. I know there are a lot of questions. A lot of you would like to be able to um, ask either particular presenters or for all four. And so we'll open it up to questions right away. Yes, sir. <clears throat> My name is Ulanbek Akhmatbaev, and I come from Kyrgyzstan. Uh, I, I would like to use this opportunity to thank FINA for this fantastic conference and I'd like to thank my colleagues for wonderful presentations and deep insights on this issue. Well, uh, we talked about water polo a lot and I try to uh, present a view of spectator or TV audience. Uh, if I underline the outcomes or conclusions of this conference, so we speak commonly about uh, less of dynamics, no speed, s simplicity of rules, so it's boring, less attractive for sponsors because of the place for branding. So uh, that means we need rev revolutionary approach. Uh, imagine in football or basketball, press conferences are organized to present new uniform. What if we implement uniform which looks like t-shirt with sleeves? It helps to differentiate for TV audience, to differentiate teams, and it provides more space for sponsors and player, player numbers. So 
so the audience can see who is who plays defense, who plays attack. Uh, think over about fin, so it will increase. It will help to increase speed. It will provide dynamics, so it can give more stronger jump out of water. Uh, in football, for example, the shoes are helping to make stronger fin of, of spin of the ball. Or in basketball, shoes are helping to jump higher. Why not to use the same approach? Uh, if, if we talk about show, uh, if I watch broadcasts at football game, I know how the average midfielder runs during the game. I know the speed of tennis ball. But uh, if I see uh, water polo on TV, I don't know these things. And uh, if we copy the show from North American basketball, so they use cheerleaders, why don't you use uh, cheer, I mean, in this meaning, cheerleaders from synchronized swimming. Thank you very much. I appreciate your comments, and I know some of those relate to presentations yesterday and, and some general summary of this. I think we'll also look for questions specifically to these presenters related to the rules. Are there any questions specifically for, uh, for the four presenters? Yes, I have a question for uh, Mr. Ben Heidegger. Um, this has been a wonderful conference. Simple question, what's next? Where do we go from here? I think we're going to hear concluding comments from Mr. Markulescu and Dr. Maglioni that will, will address that specifically. And I think, we'll, I think we'll defer to them at this point. Dale, Dale, may I give, yes, a, give a short comment? Of course, it will be concluded. I think implicitly you ask the question, what's the use being here if we will not proceed? And I know the feeling because maybe other people could have the same feeling as well. But this is such an enormous opportunity to be here all together that where the first speaker used the word revolutionary. I would give the statement we don't need a revolution, we need an evolution building on a strong fundament, building on the, I, I say it again, the intrinsic value of water polo and maybe refining this intrinsic value again. And I'm sure that with the decision already published, publicized about the development commission, we laid together, all together, the fundaments for new, ste new steps forward. And I'm so much uh, inspired by all these discussions these two days that I will go home myself very confident. Coach. Alessandro, Campagna. I think uh, uh, we should experiment uh, all this year. We have to use all this year to make some experiment. I am agree in... Uh, uh, in some points, uh, to reduce the whistle, everybody, we agree. Uh, to, in order to reduce the whistle, we have to eliminate ordinary fault, most probably. Uh, the exclusion fault, I think, uh, in all the sports, when you play tough, you are excluded. If we want to reduce the power of the exclusion, maybe the fact of the re-entry immediately could be good. And if the players play very hard, is excluded out of the game immediately. I think we have to experiment this because uh, uh, I think it could be more contra, it could be more goal even, of course, because in exclusion you can make a score in five seconds, you know? If you don't score in these five seconds, Immediately, you have to go in the other in counterattack. Mm, whatever we decide, I think we have to experiment for one year. Every federation should make some video, and we have to see the results. I think this could be a way, Cornell. 
Thank you. Thank you. Can, can I comment? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sandro. Uh, I think that uh, our experience was that in a few seconds was very exciting for the public. The few seconds have uh, the teams wanted to finish six on five, otherwise um, the defense was even. And as they had the, uh, they were obliged to score, they could score. When they didn't score, it was a counterattack. So I think that the major uh, advantage of this experiment was that instead of 60 times, 80 times we had action in front of the goal. And this way, without uh, decreasing the field, we had much more action, much more goal. But this was an experiment. Hungary sacrificed 32 games. I just offer all national federation to have ideas and not to speak only about, but to do something. And then we can arrive year by year, but that I think that the next time we can touch something in the, in the rules is after Rio. We can, we can have some experience which can help uh, the technical committee to make the best choice. That's, that's on them, no problem. Uh, we made, and I think that we shall make other experiments because we, we think globally, as I told you. No, I, I just had one comment. I, I, we, we want to attract new, new people, new fans. And I think we all have our own opinions. You know, I kind of stated some, everyone stated some. We have some great, great people, some very knowledgeable people in here. Um, but when we do test these rules, what, we can't ask ourselves, right? Because we're not the new fans. So we need to, we need to ask the new fans. Because we, we have our perceptions and our biases. And so w w whatever happens from this when we do experiment or if we do experiment, we have to poll the, the, the new people. That's why it's great to have someone like Peter here who, who doesn't necessarily know the game intimately but can speak to the, the normal observer who's, who's coming in. I think this is a, a good... Uh, good news, news that uh, I think there is a consensus, more or less, that we have some problems and which are the spirit of the solutions. I think that uh, um, um, a good consensus, no? a good consensus. But how to do that, this is the problem, no? And I think we must, uh, we must to check every, I must to open the debate about the different proposals about each, each problem that we have, and after to check, we, we must do it. When we, but we want to change deeply as sport. We must change. We must, we must um, test and, and check what is, the, what is the result final because the structure of the rules is complex. When you, you touch one thing, and it's, not, it's not only this one thing. It is, there is very, it's, it's a varied consequences that, 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 we, that we have. You know? But I think it's a, it's a good news that, uh, that there is a consensus about the feeling of what where I want to where I want to go, this is the same feeling of the the rules uh, change in Barcelona. This the spirit of the committee was exactly to promote the attack, to promote the movement. We will see at the end of the season to evaluate exactly what is is real the changes or not, or is cosmetic, or or is only doesn't solve the problems that that we face today. No. This is, the, is, is a very complicated question, but we must open the debate, different proposals, and we must check. Well, shortly, it's very important to decide which problem are we solving, as I mentioned before, and within this framework, I'm sure that the Evaluation Commission and the Technical Water Polo Commission Committee will find ways to testing, because otherwise, when we all would go, would go back and start testing, we will have a, a testing program. And I think it's in the right order. It's very important to think of this. I know we're at the conclusion of our time. And I want to thank all of you for both your attention and your questions. It's clear that from the discussion of these four panelists who have given us kind of unique perspectives that I think are very valuable, um, the emphasis comes forward for simplicity 
comes forward for action, additional attacks and ability to score goals, and probably most importantly, the ability to continue to show the, the athleticism of, of these great athletes and for them to have a chance to exhibit their skills. Um, it's going to be very important to have unity of direction and it's going to be important to establish consensus. And although there are many ideas about how things might change and how they may be different, we come back to that basic concept that we have a great game that needs to be a little bit better. And we need to listen to those who, from the broadcasters and the media, as we did earlier, and certainly from the general public who told us what they like, what they don't like, what they understand, and what they don't understand. But again, pending the, the discussions from Mr. Marculescu and Dr. Maglioni, this is a chance to exhibit some unity and consensus around important uh, rules changes that are both simple and allow athletes to show their greatness. So I'd like you to uh, express your appreciation to the, the four panelists for their great work. And uh, conclude. Well, thank you so much to this, uh, to this panel again. Uh, fantastic discussions. I'm sure they will continue also after this conference, but here we get off to a very good start for, for these debates. Also for this panel, FINA President, Dr. Mlione. Please.